Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyegolu. Now you probably heard of the famous Nigerian musician and originator of Afrobeat Fela Kuti. He was of course also a legendary political activist who used his music to protest against corruption and injustice in Nigeria and across Africa. And today his eldest son Femi is continuing that heritage of music and protest and his impact independent of his father's bequest is felt around the world as Femi continues to espouse the philosophy of one of the most powerful musical dynasties in Africa, his own son, Made, has now been inducted into that towering legacy. Recently, they released a father and son album called Legacy Plus, and in keeping with the family tradition, the music is superbly original, laced with the signature political lyrics of their celebrated progenitor that hits at the very heart and challenge of tortured existence in Nigeria. And that album has now been nominated for a Grammy Award. In a moment, we'll cross to France and speak with Femi and Made Kuti, who are currently on tour there. But first, well, let's bang the drums for original African music and for the matchless brilliance of the father and son duo, Femi and Made Kuti, who I'm delighted to say join me now on the line from France. Femi and Made, thank you very much indeed for your patience. We appreciate it because we know you're busy and you've got more important things to do than talk to us. So thank you for sticking with us. And we were talking with you, Made, before we crossed over to listen to some of that music. You were about to tell us how the album came about and what it feels like performing with your father. Yeah, first, let me say thank you again for having us. I don't know if you heard me last time on myself and my dad. And um, yeah, the album was, you know, everything that I really dreamed that it would be for my debut album. It was two separate albums that we were working on at on fairly two separate occasions as well. And I was working on my side, my side had eight tracks and I was planning on playing all the instruments on the album by myself. And my dad had completed writing all of his music. And it was my dad's idea that just, he said, ah, oh, what if here on out from the process of this, you know, music making, we release the album and we work on it together and do a joint project. Cause he doesn't think it's ever happened that a father and son have released a project on this scale together as one body of work. And everybody just immediately freaked out. And that's a genius idea, but how are we going to make it work? Then the marketing strategy had to change and all these logistics and logistical problems came into play. But what we knew was that the beauty of the idea really did, you know, it's overwhelmed every kind of challenge that we faced. And it was a very wonderful thing. My dad spent a week recording. I spent 16 days at Studio Zava. We did most of the recording in France and we came back to Lagos to do additional recording. That in Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we did, we did most of it in France and we did some in Lagos and it was wonderful. And we worked with a, our very trusted friend and colleague, Uncle Sodi, who is the owner of Zama Studio and one other person that was in the studio as well, a friend and engineer and producer called Manuel. But of course, the positive force played with my dad. I played bass and sax on my dad's band and I played everything on my side. Well, thank you for that, uh, for that uh, intro there. And let's turn to that positive force now, Femi. Um, it, it's, not on, it's not usual, is it, as Made was saying there, Femi, for a parent and a child to release an album together. I mean, did you guys have the usual arguments and fights about what parts get used and all the rest of it? Was it pretty competitive? <laughs> We don't fight. There's no competition. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it was basically uh, me um, just let um, both of us just letting each other do what they wanted to do with each other's respective album, and um, it was more of um, I didn't even get to hear his album till it was completely done. <laughs> so you see how. Stupid he can be. He didn't let me. He, it was at the final mix. He now says, Daddy, this is my side of the album. 
<laughs> that wasn't very fair yeah. because he got, he got to hear my side before I got to hear his side. And but um, yeah, that's it. so no argument at all. Well, well, I'm glad to hear that. But, of course, Made, for big figures like your father, of course, and, and like yourself, I mean, it's not just about waking up and deciding to do something with your dad. I mean, you guys have to, as you mentioned, pass it through your management and your record labels and, and get the nod of approval, don't you? My dad, luckily, has, of course, 40 years into his, his career being the legend that he is, most most circumstances that he finds himself coming up with an idea that idea is most likely going to come into fruition <laughs> so there's not much of a challenge of you know selling and marketing that idea and we had of course the most amazing team the, the label that was really a partner with us throughout the process first taking on the idea and then making sure that we executed it the way that we did as partisan knitting factory and everybody that was on that team and it's a They've been with us for a while, but this is the first time that I'm working with them on my own, you know, personal work. And, you know, from the moment of the recording and now to the album being Grammy nominated with all the promotion and all the, uh, you know, interviews and, you know, spaces that we were opportune to really put the album out. It's, it's, it's been a wonderful team, a very close-knitted and very nice team to work with. From we, what, It's not a huge amount of people but it's a very right. tight yeah very nice like, group well well let me just say that there are millions of people watching you live now and they're absolutely loving seeing the chemistry between the two of you so please stay with us we'll be back <laughs> to you in a moment you're watching the arise interview plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with the matchlessly brilliant femi and made kuti stay with us Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now I'm positively gawping with delight to say that my special guests today are the father and son duo Femi and Made Kuti, who are among the best of the biggest stars in Nigeria today. Part of Africa's premier musical dynasty, this multi-talented family invented, invented and perfected their own genre of music, taking off from where their progenitor, Fela and Nicola Pokuti, left off with his unique sound known as Afrobeat. Today, Made Kuti is on a world tour with his father, Femi, reaching new audiences in Europe and beyond and cutting across race, color, and country with their groundbreaking, superbly original music. Add to this their politically revolutionary spirit, and you can see why they've become hugely popular all over Africa and Nigeria. But their music is still their biggest draw, and Made and his father Femi have just been nominated for a Grammy in the Best Global Music category for their joint album Legacy Plus. Brilliant stuff, isn't it? And Femi and Made Kuti are still with me on the line as they continue their world tour in France. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. I mean, I could have played that song, I have to say, all through the rest of I mean, that is a superb piece of music. And uh, Femi, uh, I'm going to come to Made in a minute, but Femi, you guys are on tour in France at the moment. You're speaking to us from there. Tell us about the tour and how it's going. Uh, the tour is going quite well. I mean, we have to be very careful because of COVID-19, so we can't mix with people. We have to be restricted to our bars or hotel or the venue. Um, but um, the gigs have been going great. It's nice to see Madi perform his own music on tour. And um, I mean, it's all it's awesome right now. Thank you. And uh, I hope we'll, we'll be able to see snippets of that tour as time goes uh, on, as you, as you continue with it. But Made, your father Femi and your grandfather Fela are noted political activists and critics of the Nigerian authorities. They've used their songs to criticize various governments and speak up on behalf of the poor and dispossessed. But Nigeria is also a country with lots of potential. Do you subscribe to their robust criticism of the Nigerian system, or do you think that they're perhaps too pessimistic sometimes? 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, no, if anything, my dad is probably the most optimistic person that I know because shying away from reality is, is in a way being pessimistic. So not tackling issues is running away from them and, you know, pretending they don't exist. Hope be, being a part of the problem, not a part of the solution is what I think. So when someone like my father or father, you know, tackles the issues and fights against those huge systems that are, you know, very much against the kind of progress that we believe in. It's a hopeful endeavor because we are fighting because we want it to progress. If we didn't believe in the struggle, then we wouldn't be a part of it. So in that sense, I think my father and Fela are very, very, very optimistic, even with a song like Sorry, Sorry, where he says, ah, I'm sorry for you because you see the way Nigeria is going like this. If we don't take action now and we don't do it as soon as we can with as much effort as we can then that change will never come that is an that is a that's an act of faith and belief that progress can come if i put out my worries and my you know my doubts in not in myself but in the system i have like with my music and with my album and everything i've been writing since legacy plus has been focused more on the nigerian character rather than the nigerian system but of course, the Nigerian character is a part of the Nigerian system. It's just leadership is a problem. But I don't know myself what exactly is the solution to you know the entire country's problem. Because I think if you take the most capable, most honest, the best person and put him in leadership position, make him the president of Nigeria, I don't think anything will change. That's like putting, I think, you know, a very good police officer in the midst of 10 million armed <laughs> armed you know criminals and there's no avenue for him to really or her to really put into practice the kind of structural structural change that he or she will want to put so unless the the nigerian character itself changes then i don't think any progress can actually be made because it goes way back into not understanding who we are and i always complain about not being able to learn history in schools I think they brought back a bit of it now into high school, but I could never learn about colonial history. And being uninformed as a child is one of the worst kind of damage that a person can give to their, you know, to their future of their country. Because then suddenly he's not equipped with the information to progress, not just for himself, but his entire, you know, society, his people and people beyond that. So I think the Nigerian character and the Nigerian mentality today is the biggest problem that Nigerians face because we're uninformed, we're misinformed, and we've now been we're being fueled by ignorance. Not that is of our own, you know, fault, but it's a system that has designed that kind of mindset over the, so many. The system decades. that I think was meant to was meant to collapse from colonial times and um, bad governments. It's, it's a system that the colonial rulers knew will collapse. It was never meant, it wasn't, the system wasn't meant for us to be, become great people. So mm. you have Africans becoming great individually, but not collectively, because the system wasn't meant for us to be, to work together collectively, to be, to produce a great country or a great people. Mm. I have to say, listening to both of you, that's an absolutely sterling analysis of, of this country. Um, but, I mean, Femi, you've said severally that your relationship with your father, Fela, was not at all conventional. Would you say that your relationship with Made is much more conventional? Yes, it's full of love. It's full <laughs> of understanding. It's, we're, like, um, we're like brothers. We're like um, father and son. We're like everything. I mean, we discuss everything openly. We have yeah. no secrets. He knows my bank account. He knows, <laughs> <laughs> he knows I let him know everything. He knows there's nothing he doesn't know about me. I mean, uh, he's my, I call him my bundle of joy. And, and this is the same with all my children as well. Um, they don't know my bank accounts. They are too young to know that. <laughs> but uh, Amadi being the eldest, he, if I pass on one day, he has to hold forth. And I trust he will properly. He is. He will do that. Um, so very different, very different. But this is because um, I learned from my father. And I think being a child and growing up in Kalakuta, I now, I found out what was missing in my life. 
and this is what I've tried to provide for my children. Security, very important for children to always know their parents are always there for them. In Kalakuta, it was, it was very strange because Fela had a very, he had an open house policy and everybody was treated as equal. They all knew I was Fela's son, but it was weird. You know, we couldn't go to anybody's house and, um, and they always let us know who are not their children or relatives. And then you go to Kalakuta, you are equal. So we, it was hard to understand where we belong truly. So it was weird. So my children know, they know where they belong. They know, I mean, they, they are very secure with me. I, it's so strange to really describe uh, my relationship with my father. Very strange. <laughs> yes, Can well, I, I, totally <laughs> I totally appreciate that. But I have to say that watching the two of you together, the chemistry is brilliant and it's just so nice to see this and see the continuation of the Kuti legacy. I want to thank both of you very much indeed. I wish we could talk more, but we ran out of a bit of time. But Femi and Made Kuti talking to me there from their tour bus in France. Thank you very much indeed. That's it for this edition of The Arise Interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and around the world. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.